My name is Michael Templeton. I'm an academic uh, in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Imperial College London. And I'm the principal investigator of WISER. So WISER is a three-year project uh, funded by the Eng UK Engineering Physical Sciences Research Council, uh, which stands for Water Infrastructure for Schistosomiasis Endemic Regions. Uh, and it started in May of 2017 and runs for three years. And it's really all about reducing contact with water that's infested with the parasite that causes schistosomiasis. So we're, we're looking at doing that in three different ways, and there's three work packages in the project. So the first one's about how can we treat water to make it safe from uh, the parasite. Um, so looking at uh, what are the chlorine doses or how do you design a filter to remove the parasite. The second one is about how do you measure uh, the parasite in water to make sure that um, to be able to assess whether a water body is uh, a risk or not. And the third one is about the sort of education and risk communication that has to go alongside that. So how do you communicate uh, the, you know, the particular water body is going to put, to pose a risk or not. And we don't see these three uh, sort of work packages or three tools as always being applicable to every community, but probably going to be part of the solution in, in um, endemic communities to uh, reduce exposure and then uh, hopefully someday eliminate uh, schistosomiasis as a public health hazard if implemented alongside uh, drug administration. Memory is very happy with the WISER project because it, it brings in the, the engineering component of schistosomiasis control. What we are looking for is the new technologies and the techniques to control schistosomiasis. And this will use a simple engineering technology for water treatment as a means of uh, reducing transmission uh, to local populations. I'm Fanda Chazoga from Addis Ababa University. I'm a director of uh, the Africa Center of Excellence for Water Management, uh, which is uh, a World Bank supported uh, program as a part of the Africa Center of Excellence uh, project by the World Bank uh, and there are 46 centers of excellence in Western, Central, Eastern and Southern African countries in total. So water management is one of those uh, centers. Those centers are in different disciplines uh, uh, and our center is focus, focusing on water management uh, because it's a big challenge and major challenge in uh, eastern and southern African countries particularly. So we are focusing on both the development and uh, sustainable use and management of uh, water resources uh, including the water technologies and uh, uh, the uh, the water management is a particular the, the water supply and sanitation is uh, really a challenge in uh, many African countries, but uh, in sub-Saharan African countries, many uh, people are, are highly affected by um, uh, poor water infrastructure and uh, lack of awareness. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, lack of uh, some financial resources for uh, uh, to implement or to for, for to sustain. Collaboration is very important because we know uh, disease con diseases generally have no borders, and we know that disease control is an international uh, aspect. No country in the world can control disease on its own. So Tanzania, like other countries, will need to collaborate with other countries in, take, in terms of uh, exchange of expertise, uh, exchange of technologies, and exchange of knowledge, which are geared to control schistosomiasis and the other neglected tropical diseases. As one of the key stakeholders in this project, we're really bringing from the NHM years of experience on host parasite interactions, so really the foundations of the museum's knowledge in schistomysis research, but also snail studies and malacological work, started back in the 1960s. And there's a great history um, of this from the museum 
Imperial College of London is uh, one of our uh, partner institutions in, under this uh, Africa Center of Excellence for Water Management program and we have entered into an agreement with uh, uh, Imperial College of London and uh, one of the challenges or one of the activities we are focusing on is uh, to, to address some of critical uh, water related challenges. So, in terms of uh, technology, innovative technologies, uh, water quality testing, and uh, community uh, impact studies, awareness. So, uh, as, as key stakeholder or partner institution, so we currently we are collaborating with this water infrastructure for schistosomiasis endemic regions. So, so we have. In our project, we have partners from uh, Ethiopia and Tanzania, so those are the two partner uh, countries. Uh, and in each country, we have two case study communities who we're including. Um, this is a research project, it's not an implementation project, we'd love to include more. But we've chosen these communities um, because we know that they're in areas that are high, highly endemic for schistosomiasis and because they have different um, types of water contact which are causing the problem. So, uh, in some, we have one sugar plantation, for example, where, where people are occupationally exposed to the to the water. Uh, another uh, community in Tanzania, which is along uh, Lake Victoria, where people just go there uh, either for fishing or for, for bathing. So, we we really wanted to capture communities where the water contact is for different reasons, and therefore the solutions to reducing water contact have to be tailored differently. And uh, we do this in partnership, uh, international, academic and private sector partners, regional, Africa regional partners, and we have also partners from Ethiopia, universities and uh, uh, sector organizations, industries. So this, this, are, this is all because what a challenge is um, multidisciplinary and multi-sectoral, so we involve uh, different partners in uh, teaching, uh, research, and uh, training and uh, again uh, uh, outreach, community out outreach programs. The WISA research uh, project, as, uh, as, uh, as the name goes, the Water Infrastructure for Schistosomiasis Endemic Regions, focuses on alternative strategies to control schistosomiasis. We know that schistosomiasis yeah. is transmitted through water, okay. and uh, therefore, the WISER project looks into water treatment processes which will either kill or inactivate a schistosome parasites in water. So I'm working on, uh, as a part of the project in WISER and WISER, I'm working on, on effectiveness of water treatment against cell carrier to remove schistosomiasis or eliminate schistosomiasis. So under this project, we are going to look at several treatment processes. The first is storage, the second is sun filtration and chlorination, and finally we will have a look at UV disinfection. So yeah, we're, we're at this village today and it's, it was clear that there's um, the, whole, the whole range of demographics of ages in the community have contact with water regularly. I mean, I mean we saw the community really gathered around the water, almost as a social gathering point, I think, really. And, people going into the water just to, to wash themselves and, and also there we saw some fishermen out there also. For example, for a storage project, we, we have like, a, we know the seri carrier will live very short time, but we need to find exact residual time that the seri carrier can live so that uh, uh, we have a storage tank which is designed specifically for this purpose and know um, the exact timing that the water has to stay in, sto in, in stored in a tank and we need to you know, optimize these types of things so that we can have storage as one treatment option to remove silicone. They do have some alternative water supplies already in the community, some, some boreholes, uh, but apparently, for example, there is a salty taste to the, to the water and they prefer to go to the lake. We know that chlorination has a uh, disinfection property. Uh, it has been also known to disinfect uh, microorganisms for several years, and it's also effective against silicone. But we need to optimize different conditions like the water quality parameter against uh, removing seri carrier, the pH and the temperature effect. So we need to see exactly uh, what are the different water quality parameters uh, 
the, what are the specific parameters that are required for a chlorination so that we can have chlorination as one treatment. I think this community does not have very much power. Uh, it was very difficult to reach the community. So I mean, any kind of solution which is going to require a steady power supply or some kind of supply of chemicals on a regular basis is not going to be feasible. Um, but our approach really is to study a range of different treatment options which could be applied in different places. So I think for that particular community, you'd be looking at something which was fairly as passive as possible. And it's just though, even if you can build a storage tank to hold water for a few hours, uh, or sorry, a few days, um, that's going to actually reduce the, the, the risk, at least from a system perspective. So it, I guess, yeah, it, uh, it may be just reinforced that um, uh, you have to really assess on a site-by-site -site basis what the, the treatment solution is going to be. Um, I think quite often, it's probably, the village we visit today is probably quite typical in terms of maybe lack of the capacity to, to manage any kind of complicated treatment process and also lack of capacity in terms of um, maintenance and, yeah. and chemicals and things. And, you know, there will be cases when that will be possible. And we drove back, on the way back to Monza, we drove back past another community where there were power lines all around and there were some charging stations and things. So, um, you know, that might bring some treatment solutions back into play again. But, uh, um, yeah, I guess it reinforced that sometimes you have to go really basic and uh, yeah. think about chemical-free, energy-free kind of solutions. Yeah. Well, I think, um, ultimately, I think what I'd like to that come out of this project is some, some very specific um, results and data which can be used to support policy making. Um, so that, that might come from an organization like WHO, for example, or it could be a country ministry who says, if, you know, if you're in a schistu endemic region and you have to treat the water somehow, this is how you should be doing it um, based on the results of this, this study. Uh, that, that information or that guidance just doesn't exist currently. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's ultimately what I like to get out of it. And I think the, the reason we're having these kind of stakeholder engagement um, workshops is so that we're making these contacts with the people who are going to influence those policies and also some of the people who are going to actually implement them in, in, the, in the villages, you know, the NGOs who are going to be the ones actually installing the, the water systems. So, um, it is a research project, but we're also trying to, to go into the stakeholder uh, engagement yeah. as much as we can so that hopefully the impact of the research will be maximized at the end of the, the three years. Yeah, so the biosensor work package has sort of two parts to it. One is the Natural History Museum partners are looking at ways of measuring environmental DNA. So um, uh, they, they are experts at looking at collecting snails, which are the intermediate hosts of the disease. Uh, and they rec recognize that you need to have a lot of expertise to do that, and it's a lot of work. You have to drive out to the site. You know, you have to know what kind of snail you're looking for. Uh, and so they're, they're looking at these environmental DNA methods, which hopefully would allow you to maybe um, look for other things which are easier to measure in, in water samples, for example, that you could take. So I work on the environmental DNA side of this project. So that means looking at the snails and parasites that are coming out of them. So we're in an environment like Lake Victoria, then we have loads of different parasites coming out of these snails. So you get all sorts of crazy things coming out, not just human schisto but a full range of things, amphistomes, echinostomes, etc. So what we need to do with the environmental DNA, because it's not dispersed throughout the whole water body, the snail's distribution is patchy and so is the parasite. So we need to think about what we're doing there and how to make that totally specific at what we're looking at. The Natural History Museum is one of the partners in the, in the, Wiser, in the Wiser project and um, the component that, that we're interested in following up is a detection of schistosomes in water bodies because the current methods for finding out uh, where the transmission is occurring at a particular location is actually quite complicated involves uh, looking for snails and then and, and then you have to put the snails aside and see if they're producing sicari because it's the sicari that, that are the uh, life cycle stage that we that, that infect humans but then in a large uh, water body like uh, Lake Victoria there are all sorts of um, uh, different organisms there specifically there are a lot of trematodes all of which are producing sicari which could potentially confound the, uh, the DNA analysis if we don't make it specific enough. So there can be challenges. Um, a lot of these species of systems are quite um, identical in terms of some of the, the targets, DNA targets we could look at. But we think there's enough uh, variation between them that we can actually detect for specific species and even some, maybe hopefully some of the hybrid forms. 
Um, but yes, you can find a different, um, you can possibly get um, off target responses. That's why we do vigorous testing in our lab and, and use recombinant versions of enzymes so we can make sure that we, are, we have the specific motif for the specific en enzyme released by the specific strain. Yes, specificity is one of the biggest challenges we have here because of the number of snail species we've got in the water and the number of things that they're infected with. Not just human parasites, avian schistosomes, potentially even other mammal species in the water body such as rodent forms, so schistosoma rodani can be found there. And we need to be specific to know that we're targeting the human schisto for this project. So uh, one of the ways that we've already tried is to, is to actually detect schistosome DNA within the snails. Now we want to take that a stage further and see if we can detect schistosome DNA within the water body itself. So we're following up all sorts of, uh, all sorts of methods, um, DNA-based methods, to uh, identify whether, whether schistosomes are present in that water body. And the other part of that work package is this completely new biosensor that's being developed using synthetic biology, which would produce some kind of simple colorimetric response when it comes into contact with the water sample. So currently we don't have any kind of method like that. Either. For our part of the project, we're trying to make an affordable, uh, um, very cheap, easy to use biosensor that can be applied to the field to detect the um, It involves using different molecular techniques. So we have two different types of biosensors. One that's going to be looking at um, a molecule produced by the uh, infective form of the, the schistosomiasis, the superior. Uh, it's an enzyme called elastase, which it uses to weaken the skin so the head can get into the, the, the body. And the second type of biosensor we're going to use are based on DNA, uh, and either, either environmental DNA or DNA derived from um, actual eggs or um, myocardium, myocardium or the schistosomes, or even the adults. The countries are already starting to think about um, how long can we continue with drug programs, is that sustainable in the long run? And uh, if, if uh, we do come to the stage at some point when people are going to scale back drugs and, and s stop giving them, um, it wouldn't really be safe to do that, I think, unless you had a really um, good understanding of what the environmental risk was. And um, I think that's where that work package is really going to be important, is to, to be able to, to give us confidence that if we, if we scale back the drugs, you know, the exposure is not going to be a problem uh, anymore. Um, it's also important from a research standpoint because if we're going to do any of these treatment trials, we have to be able to tell uh, quickly and easily um, whether there's a carrier in the water before and after we've treated the water. So it serves two purposes. As a young scientist, it was wiser um, going out in, in, in terms of my professionalism because first it provides a chance for me to rank, to go far in my career and to provide some workshops in different places to meet with different people in different organizations because from there we used to change ideas and some methods that we can use in elimination of disease. So uh, why that is the key of my development career. Uh, and the idea is to try and make uh, these biosensors so that we can differentiate the different species. So not only know that A, is there schistosomiasis present, but B, can we detect which types of schistosomes are present to give us an idea of epidemiology and also what types of schistosomes are in that location. So most of WISER is first of all about understanding, I guess, what are the current water management practices that are causing the problems in the community. And that's a big part of the three years of the project, really. But um, we're, we're quite interested in looking at different approaches, I think, I would say, in terms of um, how we could potentially influence some of those practices. And again, it's going to be quite site-specific because the practices are quite different in different places. We know that schistosomiasis have got something to do with the people's behavior with regard to water contact, uh, with regard to use of toilets, and with regard to, to general hygiene. Um, my aspect of WISA is coordinating objective three of the WISA project and that's to do with the community case studies. So we're looking at um, how we can translate what objective one and objective two is going to achieve into the community considering economic and social factors. That's the non-technical aspect of um, the projects that will be very important and relevant in designing and making recommendations for what uh, infrastructure in schistosomiasis endemic regions and um, we're hoping that we'll be able to come up with some factors that will be very important in considering the design of this infrastructure 
we're looking at social and economic factors, behavioral change, attitude, change in attitude. We're going to look at costs. We're going to look at maintenance issues. We're going to look at um, the effect of gender in the community. We're also going to be looking at other training involved in terms of the type of facility that we put in place. And we hope to come up with an appropriate solution that is sustainable long term. And we hope it's going to be applicable within the different communities because there are different, no one um, solution for every community. Each community is unique in its own right. The different aspects of uh, community uh, situations in rural areas that really affect or impact sustainable use of those interventions and uh, uh, understanding the problem of the, the histosomiasis and that is how we are um, you know, collaborating with uh, Imperial College. You know, behavioral challenges uh, can be linked in our context, United context can be linked to the culture, uh, the uh, traditions, local yes. traditions, beliefs, and uh, also behavioral uh, issues can be linked to the education, the awareness level of the communities. So, uh, I, so this, in any case, this uh, behavioral issues really um, uh, affects, uh, you know, our main target goal, which is elimination of uh, schistosomiasis, that is a disease causing many people. So, uh, uh, the this. Uh, Behavioral challenge uh, can be addressed accordingly. Can be addressed in various ways. One is, you know, awareness creation, education, uh, suppose the community, uh, schools, <laughs> producing in curriculums, and uh, the other issue is local beliefs or traditions. So this can be also addressed, I think, by continuous engagement with communities. And, uh, really try providing sufficient information sufficient information to communities uh, that that clearly you know indicates the risk of such diseases and uh, how they affect their lives their children uh, and then if they understand uh, those risks very clearly and of course, through continuous engagement, I think uh, this will be improved through time. Acting for health, so it's, uh, I think uh, it's one way yeah. of uh, teaching communities about uh, the risk uh, of uh, such diseases and uh, their effects. The most important point which I've learned uh, is to, to uh, it's a, a most Im a very important way to, 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 to show or to communicate to the people the risk of, uh, of course, schistosomiasis, but I think it can be uh, again uh, you know, applied for other communicable or non communicable diseases as well, in those, uh, in particularly if we consider the Ethiopian situation. So most you know, poor communities are not aware or they, they are not. Uh, getting exposed to those kind of you know informations on a regular basis, so it is I think a very important tool to create awareness and to engage people uh, to discuss uh, to make them discuss on their own problem and come up with or suggest even solutions to their own problems. And if you agree on the, 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 the solutions, or if they agree one on the solutions then implementation of those solutions will not be uh, very much difficult. We want to go through, first of all, the community leaders for sensitization. Then we hope to get them on board and then use nudges within the community. Probably it could be folk tales or stories that members of the community are used to. So in Africa, people love stories. So if we can tie that around community nudges, things that already the community are familiar with, then we can integrate that and come up with a model that will work well for the community. Even if we implemented the perfect water treatment technology, which had no chemicals, no energy, was com completely free to build, uh, but people just didn't use it for whatever reason, um, you know, it, it, it defeats the whole purpose. So no technology on its own can, can work without um, 
providing people that understanding that that's required of, of why we're doing it.